Hello everyone, this is Johannes and you are watching Board Gaming Ramblings and today we are taking a look at the game that is on Kickstarter right now. It is a game that was first released back in 2011 and now it's coming back to Kickstarter with colorful games and the game is of course Omen, a reign of war, this small little box from designer John Claudius, which is a two player only card game and I I love those kind of games like I have played so many magic fights I don't know I, I don't have a count for it I, I really enjoy these kind of games but there are so many of them so can Omen rise above the rest and, and, and see and, and, and play differently enough to be interesting to actually get a hold of we will I will tell you what I think about this game so far from the base of playing this prototype but first let's go to onto the table and see how you play the game Okay, so let's talk about how you play Omen Reign of War. I'm not going to go into every detail of the game, just tell you briefly how a round works and how, so you maybe get a little bit of feeling about how the game plays. At the beginning of the game, each player is going to get six of these feed cards. They're going to get four cards from the shared deck and they're going to get four coins. And then the game is ready to begin. You, on your turn, you're going to do the following. The first step is the wealth step. You're going to have three wealth actions and for each action you can choose to draw a card or to get a coin. If you choose to do three of the same action, let's see, I want to get three coins. Boom. I will get one coin for free. So if you choose to do all of the same actions, you will get one more. So if you drew, drew three cards, you will drew, drew, draw four cards instead. After that is the third step where you will play your units from your hand. You have different kind of units and all the units have different abilities, they have a different cost which is up here in the yellow uh, circle, they have a different attack value which is in the red and an offering value which is in the blue which I will explain later. Let's say I want to play this card, I would have to pay two coins to the bank and I will play it into one of the three cities. Of course on my side of the board I'm just placing it here to be more showing to the viewers because I care about you guys that you see how this looks. So, I can play as many cards as I want. If I have all this card in my hand and all the money in the world, I can play all the cards I want into all of the three cities. A lot of the cards have special abilities like deploy abilities, which will happen when you play out the card. When you're done playing out your cards, you're gonna go to the portent step, which is, if you have oracles in play, all the oracles activate during their ability, which gives you cards, which gives you um, coins, which makes you reveal the top card of the deck, and if there's another oracle there, you will either get a benefit or you will get something bad happening to you. So, a little bit of random luck there to see, like if you have a lot of oracles, you will maybe get a lot of stuff, or maybe you won't get anything. So, after you do the portent step, there's the feat step. You see if you have managed to do some of the feats, so the feats are one oracle in each city, you have three or more opponents cards were destroyed, drew five or more cards this round, five units in a single city, one beast in each city, or one soldier in each city. All the cards you have, uh, have accomplished, you will place face down and they will be worth two points at the end of the game. After that, you will go to the war step, and there's going to be a war if your opponent has three cards in that city, or if you have, or, there's a, uh, is, or if there are five units in that city. All in all, there will be a war, you will flip this over to the war-torn side, and you will see who has the most um, the most strength. The player with the most strength will win one of these reward tokens. And those will be worth two points at the end of the game. But on the other side of them, they're going to have a really powerful ability. And you can use one of them each search step, which is like the action step I just explained. And if you would choose it to use it, you will use the ability and the, the tile will only be worth one point. So basically, you're using a point to get a nice ability. After the war step, you're going to have your um, offering step where you can throw away one of your cards. Let's say I throw away this one. You see in the blue circle is a number two. And if I destroy this or I discard this for offering, I will then choose to pick up to two cards or up to two coins in any combination I want. Then it's my turn is over and it's your turn and you're going to do the exact same thing. You're going to continue playing until either at the end of my turn Five, your, the opponent has completed five of their feats, or if 
uh, two of the cities do not have any more reward tokens, then the game is over and you will count up who has the most points. And the player with the most points is the winner of Omen A Reign of War. And that is a brief overview about how you play Omen and I have to say this game really took me by surprise. I have never heard about this game before. I, I know it's been kind of like a small published game so the people who played it have seemed to like it. I read quite a few things about it now after hearing about it but I have never heard about this game before. Colossal Games told me that this was a game that existed. So I'm always really intrigued playing these two player card games because some of them are really good, some of them are okay and some of them or most of them are really really horrible. So how is Omen? I will tell you that but first let's go to components. Uh, this is a prototype, prototype of the game but I really just wanted to, to tell you about the artwork in this game. I really really like the artwork. It's beautiful, it's amazing to look at these like Greece mythology, uh, Greek mythology, like beautiful beautiful artwork. Uh, which I really really enjoy. Go to the Kickstarter page and you will see lots and lots of really nice artwork which I, I, yeah, I really really dug that. I also actually got a couple of expansions for the game which was really easy to mix into the game which we also did and I will come back to that but I just want to say quite a different, uh, there's a different theme in one of the expansions which also have really beautiful like Egyptian kind of artwork which was just mind-blowing. I, I love, just look at this, this is, this is the box cover for one of the expansions. This is a really beautiful piece of art and also the, the main box of the, the game. It's really 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 beautiful pieces of artwork. And this is, I could, I could have this on my wall, like you could have this piece of art on my wall. So if you can make that an art piece on my wall, do it. So yeah, Let's talk about the gameplay. This game, first of all, is a lot of fun. And if you've seen my videos before, you know I love fun. Like, fun is the world. Like, I love fun everywhere. Fun in the in my brain. Fun on the table. Fun in the cards. Fun in my hands. It's fun. It's a party of fun. Fun, 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 fun. It's a party. That's the fun dance, which I just came up with. It's the dance of fun, which makes everything great because fun is good and dancing is fun. I don't know what I'm talking about, but let's talk about this game, which is fun. It's a really, really fun game. I was kind of taken by surprise, as I said in the beginning of this video, by this game because I didn't know anything about it. And we sat down, I read the rules. The rules are really, really simple. Like, this is a straightforward game as it can get. Like, you, you start around by taking some coins or drawing some cards, you play some cards, you can activate some Oracle cards, you see if there's some war, see if you've done any missions. And then the round is basically over, you do some offerings to get some more cards or some more coins and it's over and you just do that continuously over and over again until the game ends. It's, it's really smooth. The game feels really smooth like the first time we played we had to check like the okay which step is now, what step is going on after this. But after playing it a couple of times you don't really need that anymore and the game just flows really 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 well. Like most of these games like okay this game has 24 phases and 65 rounds. It's not like that, it's just like really smooth sailing all the way. And the way, this, this is a really tactical game. Like it's, it's, not a, it's not a highly strategic game because there is so much stuff that's going to happen that the other player is doing and you have to react to that. But most of these games are like that. Most of like Magic and Ashes, Rise of the Phoenix Born, all of these kind of two player head to head games are more tactical games than strategic games. Strategic, strategic games and this is no, no um, nothing else than that. It's a really really tactical game. Like you have to see okay you're doing that. But in the same way you can try to do your own things by trying to complete the feats. So quite some of the feats are like okay I will do this round. Oh well I had three beasts on my, on my hand. I would just play those boom 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 in, in each of their cities and then I will have a feat. That's two points. Two points is pretty big in this game. Um, you will have, sometimes you can just do by yourself something you have to react to the other players. I really love the decisions here like there are. It's a pretty light game like there's not, not, not a heavy game here but it was really fun quick playing and um, so many the choices felt meaningful which is something I I don't mind playing lighter games like I love light games but I do love that every me that every um, everything you do every choice you make feels meaningful and that is really really well 
in this game. Like everything feels like it's there for a reason. Everything you do uh, is so good. All the different abilities feels really, really nice. I really love that all the different cards, all the cards are different. Every single card has a different ability, a different things that they do, and you'll have to see what cards you're getting to try to make it up so that you will have the best hand possible and do the best stuff that is possible for you to do. One thing I really was really unsure about how much I would like that in the uh, simple version of the game, like the, the base rules, you only have one draw deck for, for both players. And that was something I haven't seen in this kind of game before. And I was like, I was afraid it was gonna feel a little bit too random. But the, because you draw so many cards during the game, it doesn't really feel random. You're going to go through the deck maybe one or two times during a game. And it doesn't really feel too random because you sometimes you will get lucky and like, oh, I get all those cards. really easy for me to get that feat. But then maybe those cards aren't so good on the abilities or maybe those cards aren't so powerful so that you will lose battles. And it didn't really feel too random. We did also play, try to play with the draft variant where you draw three cards, you take, choose two of them, and you give your opponent the last one, which is a really, really interesting way of doing a draft with two players, because drafts with two players doesn't really usually work. But in this case, it really, really made sense. Like, it's really interesting to see, okay, I really want these two cards, but then you're getting that card. Do I really want my opponent to have that? Sometimes, like, when I have gotten a lot of Oracle cards, one card said, like, destroy the Oracles or destroy all Oracles, something like that. I would kind of maybe keep that card in my deck even though I didn't really feel like I needed it just because I didn't want you to have that card in your deck. And that makes the game even more interesting to play with the draft variant because you will... That, that makes the game a little bit more strategic because you can make kind of a strategy during the draft that you will try to, to do this kind of thing or this kind of thing, do heavy power or do a lot of oracles to get all the different benefits during the game. It's really interesting to see that draft is really working well with two players, which it usually, usually don't. There is another draft variant as well in the game, which I haven't tried yet, but we have tried. Let's talk a little bit about the expansions. Uh, I'm... As far as I know, the expansions are, you, you can play them like a standalone games, but they're really small games, like with 22 cards, just like a small little variant of the game. What we did what, uh, was what uh, the game allowed us to do, to have the oracles, the beast, and the soldiers in the base game, and then just take three different ones from whatever set you wanted and shuffle them in. So we tried to play actually with um, most of the cards from the new expansion that is coming out uh, with this Kickstarter, and those were really, really fun. Change of the game was the most fun we had playing the game was with the cards from this new expansion. So basically, this game is fun. This game is fast, it's amazing, it's cool, it's just such a great two-player game. I really, really recommend to check out this game. If you like to play two-player games, this game isn't too mean, it's fun, it's light-hearted, it's amazing. I really loved this game highly recommend checking out omen on kickstarter right now that's the end of the video thank you so much for watching board gaming ramblings please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and i will talk to you soon bye bye